What up, what up, what up, people? What's good? What's up? It's me, L Teddy 27 This is Angry Teacher Chronicles because I'm a teacher. I'm angry all the time, and these are my chronicles. And this is going to be my review for the ABC Limited Series for Life, and this is episode three. Let me get right down to it. <clears throat> Listen, y'all. I got page and page and page and pages of notes. I will say, of my reviews, you all seem to love me reviewing shows like this. You all loved my Queen Sugar reviews, my Pose reviews, my David Makes Man reviews. You all love those. Even my Greenleaf reviews. This is a difficult show to review. Not impossible, but difficult, which is why I don't see a lot of my fellow reviewers doing it. A lot of moving parts, lots of pieces, lots of things to internalize. So I hope you appreciate me doing it because I really just want to most times sit there and enjoy the show and just watch it and not have to be so focused in on all of the intimate details and nuances of the show. But I'm here for y'all. If you continue to watch and comment, then we'll continue going with it. Anyway, let's get right down to it because I don't want this to be too long. So Aaron... <clears throat> We meet this inmate named Hassan, and Hassan does the program. He's um, a converted Muslim. Um, he's now a part of the Nation of Islam, and he does this program where he helps people get off drugs. You know, it's like NA, Narcotics Anonymous, where they talk and they go through the steps and things like that, and he's there with them, and he's their, um, what do they call the people? Um, their sponsor, kind of like their sponsors or whatnot. So... Hassan's brother is a cop. He's NYPD. We find out that Aaron wants to use Hassan's brother in order to have his brother go because his brother being a cop has access to, um, you know, case files and stuff like that that the police have. And we remember last week they, you know, the judge um, voted against um, Aaron last week and they kept the files sealed. So Aaron... Aaron's idea is if I can get close enough to Hassan's brother, then I can maybe try to convince his brother to go and get copies of the file and get them to me. Damn Hassan. In the beginning. So Aaron's friend Jamal, you know, Aaron and Hassan, um, they um, talk about it and everything. They talk about the brother. And Hassan was like, well, listen, my brother... He, he don't really see it for me. I tried to write a letter to him years ago. He ain't even responded back. I ain't heard from him. He don't care about me. So Aaron was like, well, I'll try. And I'll tell him that you didn't tell me to contact you. I just do what I can. Um. Meanwhile, Aaron's friend um, talks to him. And Aaron's friend, Jamal, says, well, have you told Aaron everything that you plan on doing? All about trying to get his brother to help you? He was like, nah, because he might pull out. And so Jamal is like, you know, that's kind of, that's bad business. And I agree with Jamal. It's bad business, Aaron. And when you try to do uh, um, bad things like this, bad things happen to you. And we'll see that those bad things start to happen. Anyway, so he, Aaron's friend Jamal says, well, tell him. Aaron's like, no, not going to tell him, at least not now. So Aaron calls the brother. The brother comes to see Aaron and, um in jail now the brother i don't even know that young man's name but he is a tall piece of dark chocolate let me help you understand something let me help you understand something now nah. mm, 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 mm. oh child oh lord we're gonna call him sexy chocolate okay that'll be his name sexy chocolate so sexy chocolate comes to visit aaron okay and after some back and forth, this, that, and the third, he agrees to testify. The DA, uh, Maskins, at this point, him and his cronies, the DA is tired of Aaron. Aaron, in his estimation, is beneath him. And the fact that Aaron um, has embarrassed them a time or two so far in court, and he feels that Aaron is beneath him, first of all, Aaron is black. Add to that, that Aaron is in jail. And he helped put Aaron in jail. So he thinks in his estimation that Aaron is way, way, 
way beneath them. Okay, so they are, you know, think of it like when you see a cockroach craw crawling around your floor and that cockroach you know is beneath you, what do you do? You stomp on it and kill it and do away with it because it's beneath you. It's not on your level. And that's what Maskins um, wants to do with Aaron. So he wants to wipe him out in one one swipe. <clears throat> While Aaron um and Aaron and Aaron Aaron and God by her handwriting, Aaron and Hassan, all these A's. Um they practice for their testimony on the set. And Hassan tells him, you know what, you're really good at this. You know, I have high hopes for this case. It looks like we may be able to um, you know, we may be able to win this. Aaron goes to court. While Aaron is at court, who shows up to the prison? The ADA, the assistant DA with, I think his name is O'Reilly. <coughs> with all of his people from the district attorney's office. And they got subpoenas and all. Because they got subpoenas to check the surveillance footage. Because they said they believe that Aaron has committed forgery and falsifying evidence. Aaron is being accused of committing forgery and falsifying evidence and stuff like that in that case that we saw during episode one. So, and we know full well that Aaron did it. Now, they go through all of this stuff. They find exactly what they're looking for. All of the evidence that they need. Not conclusive, but certainly enough evidence to um, build a case. The warden is completely blindsided by this. Listen, the warden is caught off guard. She had no idea. You know the warden, she is completely trusting of Aaron. Sometimes probably too trusting. But baby, she is caught all off guard. And she's still out of sorts with what to do. Even with her being blindsided and so forth, she's still protecting Aaron. Because they were like, well, we can go ahead and start to um, interview the guards to see whether or not they recognize it. That she was like, no, you got to go get another subpoena for that. And they were like, don't worry, we will. Anyway, she's still doing what she can to protect Aaron because I, I don't think she... She knows she sees that clearly it happened, but she just doesn't want to believe that the, the worst in Aaron. And so um, she's still protecting Aaron. So Aaron argues his case or whatever. While the judge is deliberating, Aaron goes to the brother <coughs> and tells the brother, hey, I know you work down there at the police station. I know you're an officer. I know you heard about my cases. Can you help me? Can you look? Can you look into my file? Can you give me a cop? That sexy chocolate looked at um, Aaron like, are you serious right now? You want me to risk my job and all of that for you? Sexy chocolate wasn't having no parts of it. He sees right through it. Sexy chocolate says, so this is the real reason why you wanted to take my brother's case. Not because you really gave a crap about him. Child, sexy chocolate saw right through Aaron. And gave him dust, Sonny. Just gave him complete dust. Paid him dust. Meanwhile, back at the jail, there's some guy. I Y'all help me out if you know. I don't know who this guy is that's following the warden around, but he is following her around. I don't know if he's the, her assistant or whatever, but some white dude who's been following her around and so forth. So he's basically trying to convince her that, listen, when Aaron bring his uh, black behind back from this good uh, court, you need to throw the book at him. You need to go in and let have, let go, and let God on him. Okay? So, then we see that the COs are interviewed about the footage from the surveillance um, cameras. Okay? They admit, yeah, we saw, you know, stationary and things exchange hands, but we don't know what color it was. And basically, there's no conclu nothing conclusively corroborating um, you know, that this was the stationery and things that Aaron used for the forgery that they that was presented in case. Nothing, you know, just um that damning and conclusive. It was the same thing. They, you know, corroborated what you saw in the surveillance footage. Back at court, the judge is back from deliberating. Black judge. Dog skinned black judge. I'll get to that in a second. 
Anyway. He berates Aaron. But, and Aaron deserved it a little bit here. He went in on Aaron for the old, the new, the past, the present, the beginning, the end, the first, the last, the genesis to the revelations, the alpha to the omega. Okay. He went in on Aaron. Basically said, you did a piss poor job of representing your client. You didn't present the, re the best case for your client. You didn't present the best defense for your client. You did not fulfill your job as counsel for your client. You only came up here with one witness. A biased one witness at that. He went off. Now, let me sidebar real quick and jump on my soapbox. So, I noticed. I told y'all I was a black judge. This has nothing to do with colorism, but go with me here. It's a dark skinned black judge, too. Real dark. <clears throat> dark like sexy chocolate is. Anyway, <clears throat> you ever notice that all of those staunch black Republicans, you know, the one, the ones that do all of these things that go completely counter to everything that we need as a people, as black people. You know those people, the Allen Keyses of the world and the what's the guy from South Carolina, Senator Scott. You know all of those people. Ben Carson. You notice they always be the blackest um, ones of us all. I mean, they just be black, black. I mean, real dog. And they always have this pious um, aura about them. And they're always looking down at other black people who they feel are beneath them. That's kind of the air that I got from this judge during this case. Y'all let me know what y'all think. But y'all let me know if y'all see the same thing. These, let me, move it on. On the way back to the jail, Hassan is upset, apparent, uh, um, clearly. Hassan is like, listen. It all everything is un, unveiled, unraveled, un, unraveled, unsheathed. We find out Hassan finds out. Yeah, I did um, take your case because I did want to talk to your brother. All of those things about the brother and everything. And Hassan is upset. And Hassan was like, more than anything, I had a chance, and you did not represent me well. And now I could never have another chance to get out of jail um, early. So he says, "Listen." You ain't just a shitty lawyer. It looks like you're a shitty person as well. So, Hassan basically says, you need to be worried about your credibility and your reputation at this point because I am going to tell people about how you represented me in this court. At the hospital, Aaron's ex-wife, Marie, okay? She works, she's a nurse at the hospital. <clears throat> Baby, the DA um, investigators came through there. And said, you need to come with us. We need to talk to you. Like, they was arresting her or something. It was kind of bad. It was a whole big scene. But you know they love doing us black people like that. They love making a scene, honey. Um, but they come to pick her up for questioning. They take her straight to DA Maskin's office um, when she gets there. She's, and she ain't being interrogated by, um, you know, some little people. Maskin's is um, talking to her himself. Of course, she's giving him nothing without a lawyer. He tells her all about the surveillance. He shows her the surveillance footage. He tells her point by point exactly what was done, how they did it, and what this could cause her. And then he basically goes in on Aaron and how bad he is for her and the fact that Aaron left her high and dry and now she's finally starting to pick up the pieces of her life. And Does she really want to go back down this road with Aaron? Basically, you know, this scene kind of bothered me because you have old white man who does like white men do often in the criminal justice system. They look at us black people and people of color and they have this same scene that we see here in the DA's office played out over and over and over billions of times in the history of the criminal justice system. 
where they basically telling us, you know, basically trying to hold our hand to the fire and telling us what we should and should not do. Because even when she asked him, well, what if it was your wife and what if it was your family and your daughter and stuff like that? You know what he says to her? Well, I wouldn't have myself in that kind of position. Well, you it's easy for you to say that being a white man here in America, but as black people or people of color here in America, it's not so easy to make statements like that. But whatever. I mean, I couldn't help but hear in my head, those people who watch my channel know we have our orange shirt video. I just, he was, because he was really giving it to her. I just kept hearing in my head, he getting you, sister. He getting you, sister. He getting you, sister. Ciao. Go see one of my silly Saturdays. You might learn what our hashtag our shirt is. Moving on, because this is going longer than I thought. So, the they tell her that, you know, her attorney is there. So, the, the new boyfriend, Darius, the one who is the best friend of Aaron, had a lawyer come and they got her out of there. He goes in on her, basically saying... You got to be the dumbest person in the world to allow yourself to fall back into this whole thing with Aaron. You need to leave him alone. You got a 17-year-old daughter who's about to have a baby. Why are you allowing yourself to get, you know, caught back up with Aaron? You know he's not going to get out of jail. You all of it, you need to let it go. Maybe baby he was mad, mad. No, he was mad, mad, okay? <clears throat> he doesn't want her to get caught up with Aaron and his foolishness. I think that he don't want her to get caught up with Aaron because he knows if Aaron gets back out, she's going to leave him and go back with Aaron. But that's a whole nother story. The assistant DA goes to Assange's brother, Sexy Chocolate, Officer Sexy Chocolate, to get info out of him. And Sexy Chocolate pretty much declines to help him, okay? Um, and then we see Aaron calls him. And call Sexy Chocolate and tell Sexy Chocolate, listen, I need you because I want to try to reopen um, Hassan's case. Go get this information and I can use it to help reopen um, the case. So um, Aaron's still trying to help out Hassan because he needs to build back up his credit. It ain't because he really care about Hassan. It's because he care about his credibility because he needs these cases in order to help his own case. Aaron then goes in to see the warden to ask her about <coughs> helping, asking her about do, going to do something for the case, for Hassan's case. Her energy, though, was off with him. <coughs> her energy was real off, and he noticed it. But she doesn't let him know that she knows all about the forgery, and he don't know that she know all about the forgery and the, and the fact that the um, assistant DA came. Aaron then goes back to court to argue the reopening of Hassan's case, right? So, Aaron was on his A-game this time. This was the Aaron that we have grown to love. He was on it. He presented his case. He was on, he was, he was right, he was right there in the pocket. He was doing great. Baby, that judge looked at him, still shut it down. And it was this whole pious, um, attitude that the judge had with Aaron. You know, the, this whole thing, I am a part of the bourgeoisie and you are a mere peasant beneath me. You know, that whole thing, because he referenced, you know, where he went to law school and different things like that. It was just a mess. I told y'all, we talked about this a little bit ago. Anyway, uh, my son is still grateful because during this second trial or the reopening, Hassan and his brother were able to mend defenses and rebuild their relationship. And so the brother, um, you know, vows to go and visit Hassan in jail the next week. So that was good. Hassan was very glad about that. And he told Aaron, you ain't got nothing to worry about with your cred. <clears throat> back at the prison, when they get back to the prison, the one of the COs tells Aaron all about the visit um, from the ADA and the fact that they pulled those surveillance videos and all of that stuff. Aaron calls uh, Marie. He apologizes to Marie. Marie, because Marie tells him, you know, I had to go to the um, DA's office. And they was trying to scare me and um, question me. And he's he's out of sorts now because he, you know, he didn't know it would get this far. So she tells him, listen, you need to be worried about yourself, not me. They got the surveillance footage. The warden also is not too happy with you right now because she knows all about all of this. So Aaron now knows why the you know, 
him and the vibe with the Wharton was off the um last time he went to see her. Aaron goes to see this inmate who has intel on the dirty COs in the prison that are allowing these drugs to come in because they're allowing drugs to come in so that it is um doesn't look good for the warden and so they can get her transported um transferred out of there because they're trying to get the warden out of there so he gets that information from that inmate meanwhile at the da's office the da is meeting with his cronies and all of his team with a couple people from his team and they talked about a few things but one of the things that i paid attention to is keep in mind that they have their eyes set on sexy chocolate. I got a feeling all of this stuff that sexy chocolate was doing this week is gonna come back to bite him in the butt. All this helping up Aaron, I don't see that working out well for sexy chocolate, but we'll see. Aaron then goes to see the warden. Aaron lets her know that he knows all about the um assistant DA coming and the fact that she knows about the forgery, he knows everything. This whole scene was great. This was the best scene of the entire episode because they get, they have this back and forth where they go in on each other. And she talks about the fact that he needs to know that there's a line between her and him. And he was like, what line? And he goes through all of this stuff that he has to go through and his family and people have to go through. And this, that, and the third. And he says, and I know you're going to threaten me and tell me you're not going to give me the privileges that you give me to go and do this, that, and the third for my cases. He said, but if you decide to do that, I'm not going to give you the information that I have that will let you know who in this prison that works for the prison that's trying to get you fired by letting all these drugs in here. So, child, you know, that was all she needed to hear. And so he gives her the information. But basically, it was in exchange for her try her not trying to stifle him with everything he try he's trying to do because of this mythical line that there is between he and her. Uh, that was a great scene. A great scene. Lastly, we see Marie comes to visit Aaron in jail. Marie um, tells Aaron, listen, Aaron, keep me out of your mess. I don't want no parts of your illegal dealings and all of this tomfoolery. No parts. Keep me out of it. He said, you know what? I will. I apologize. I did not mean for this to go that far. She has him a package. She says, some cop, sexy chocolate. Some cop came and dropped this off to me and said that you may need this and that if you want, you need to start on page 74. Basically, Sexy Chocolate though went and copied Aaron's whole file, brought it to the wife, ex-wife, and the wife done brought it to Aaron. And that's where it goes off. So we'll see what Aaron does with this and we'll see how it goes. But mark my words, that DA, I think they're going to do something to Sexy Chocolate and I hate it for him. That was For Life, episode three. I hope y'all enjoyed this review. Let's get down in the comments. Y'all let me know what y'all see. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about what I said, my review and everything. We'll be down in the comments section. I like to argue, not argue, but argue about what we saw. Until next next time, because I, I think we got a week off, because I don't think it comes back until the 10th. So until next, next time, that's it. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely.